What initiates the rut? I'll give you a hint. It's not the moon phase or the weather. Now, I know a lot of folks are really interested in understanding deer biology and specifically when the rut is going to occur because that's a really fun time to be in the woods. I can relate. I also am very interested. Last year, I was sitting on the stand in Alabama during January, and it was literally so warm that I needed to wear a t-shirt. And I still experienced really intense running activity. And that kind of led me down this path to do a literature review to try to understand what is actually governing that. Because I hear the same thing a lot of you hear about this topic that people think, oh, when we have cold weather or uh, particular types of storm events or uh, particular moon phases that those are actually causing the rut to occur. But I was really surprised when I went through this literature base because not only did I find out that wasn't true, I also found some fairly definitive evidence for exactly what is occurring. So what I found from the literature review, and I'll link all of this so that you can read it for yourself if you like, for temperate deer, so much of the whitetail deer range, estrus is a consequence of decreasing day length. All right, so here's what I mean by that. The pineal gland is the most active in darkness. All right, so deer have this pineal gland and it produces melatonin and that hormone is really important in starting the estrus cycle. In the case of white-tailed deer, shorter day length equals more active pineal gland. So think more of the 24-hour the cycle is darkness. And when you have that, that more active pineal gland, you have more melatonin produced. Once a critical level of melatonin has been reached in the body, that causes a cascade of hormonal events in the individual, which ultimately leads to estrus being induced. This has been really well studied and demonstrated experimentally. And that makes a lot of sense in terms of the biology of the animal. It's thought that deer need to have fawns born in particular times of the year. And this is a way that you can have a reliable cue that will signal individuals within a population to basically synchronize the estrus cycle within the whole population. Now let me address one uh, part of this that might be confusing. That doesn't mean the same day length is going to cause the same cascade at the same time across different populations. There are some local adaptations that are really important in this. In fact, uh, depending on when the phone is, is to be born might really change when during the year the day length is right to, to cause this cascade. A stark example of this is in South Florida in the Everglades where the rut is actually during the summer to synchronize breeding so that the uh, primary pulse and, and fawns being born occurs during the dry season because being born during the wet season in that environment is a death sentence for fawn survival. So I, I hear people talk about the moon phase and weather and this is a common argument and I, I really thought that there would be less certainty in the data on this but there are some really cool experiments that settled this issue definitively. One of those studies was actually published in 1937. So literally almost a century ago, this has been pretty well ironed out. But in that study, I, I found it really fascinating because they took deer that were in the Northern Hemisphere and moved them to the same latitude in the Southern Hemisphere. And they saw exactly when they crossed the equator and became locally adapted, the deer literally flipped when the estrus cycle occurred by exactly six months. All right, so think about that. They went from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. So what essentially happened is the day length is hitting the exact same length 
on the same day of the year, but this definitively showed that it's actually the shortening day length because the estrus switched six months with that change in their environment. Pretty remarkable. Have you ever heard that fawns will breed if they're in healthy populations? Uh, a lot of people attribute that to fawns being born earlier and then they're in better condition during the first breeding season and then we see a larger proportion of them breed. That is true, but it isn't the whole story. Another one of the studies that definitively linked the onset of estrus to that changing day length, specifically the decreasing day length, did that by raising fawns, really healthy fawns, you know, they're, they're uh, really excellent nutrition, but they were raised in a room where they could control the photo period very specifically. And in this experiment, they kept fawns for nine weeks in a stable photo period. So in other words, the, the day length was not shortening or lengthening, it was staying stable. So in that circumstance where the photo period was not decreasing, we did not see this cascade of events from hormones being triggered by melatonin. It never hit that critical level. So even though the fawns were in there for nine weeks, that delayed estrus was a consequence of the photo period not causing the release of melatonin. There have also been some really cool studies in the wild, one in a wild deer population in Virginia. They looked at the conception dates for hundreds of wild does in that population over several years, and they found that the conception date was completely independent of temperature and moon phase and other weather events in that study. So pretty cool. Uh, these populations were operating really independent of those things. That doesn't mean that the environment does not matter at all. We do have two circumstances that can influence when individuals come into estrus at a finer scale. So in terms of, you know, within a few days or even weeks uh, within a population, an individual could get influenced. And that's primarily linked to the density of the individuals. Uh, in the population. That's not to say that there aren't any environmental factors that are affecting the fine scale initiation of estrus in individuals. There has been research that shows that the nutritional status of females tends to lead them to being earlier in est their estrus cycle. And uh, we even see that happen in populations where the environment gets improved, maybe we uh, implement broad scale improvements in habitat quality, and that can, particularly in summer nutrition, lead to individuals initiating estrus earlier. And plus, if you're interested in knowledgeable about quality deer management, one of the things that has been observed when we, through harvest, accomplish a more balanced age structure and sex ratio in populations, those healthier does also tend to go into estrus earlier in the year. So those changes are usually in the order of a couple of days or, or even a week or two, but in all, the ultimate factor that is initiating it for the individual is that changing day length to where we get this cascade of the melatonin hormone. So if you're sitting around the campfire arguing over what is initiating the rut, you can now definitively say that that is a consequence of the shortening day length, which leads to the release of melatonin that causes a cascade of hormones, which cause estrus to begin. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're enjoying these deep dives on topics of interest like this, please subscribe. We're going to be bringing more and leave a comment. If you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, I'm trying to be responsive to the audience. So if you leave me comments on topics, once I, I can get to those topics, I will do a deep dive and cover them in the same format for you. Thanks for listening.